achieve the five application, if we can do it, we can do VO2 thin films. So one way is thin film like taxi in this case, the strain is roughly 1%, and this one, lattice parameter, is smaller than TiO2. That is the best substrate you can find and grow TiO or VO2. That's why people use that one for many years. And then we have lack of substrate, available lutein substrate. So the structure is same. The lattice parameter of these two are lutein substrate it's bigger than this. So that's the lattice parameter, lattice mismatch, like 1% of tensile strain. So tensile means you grow thick, then at some point it cracks. Okay. So this is another problem, this one cracks. So you look at the cross-sectional TM, and TM has uh, the, some kind of tool, some way to map out your strain. Okay? So you have this one is a microstructure of VO2 on TiO2 substrate, and when you grow very thick, it cracks due to like a some some, not some expansion, you have lattice expansion, so tensile, and you cracks. And you look at this, this this color mapping shows different strain gradient. And then this lattice here, and these are different color, which means here and here is not the same in-plane lattice parameter, out of the lattice parameter. And you can see the color mapping here, and different regions and different color contrast, which means your strain gradient is there. And near crack, and then you have this one, this region, and strain gradient less, here's more gradient, red one, less, and then your white one is more, and you have a gradient. So, so genuine epitaxy, and then we have a gradient, is a lot of uh, strain relaxation cause this problem. And low strain, and low strain, and large strain, and then you have change of this. So predicting the phase transition dynamics, how the strain and the gradient affect the phase transition nanoscale. So then, doing experiment over these things, we can work with the theorists in computation can do certain things. Not experimentally do all of them. Theory and computation, you have to guide us and help you to where you want to start. And then thinking about our hypothesis is reasonable to approach. So you can save time, but also they can guide you which one you will look at. So we work with the calculation, theoretical phase diagram at Telfield influence, and then calculation strain largely affect the transient temperature. The simple calculation can show the VO2, applying the strain is when you apply this tensile strain and compressive strain, and compressive strain, you increase temperature, and tensile strain, lower the temperature. So your TiO2, and then you have <coughs> zero strain state and the transition temperature above room temperature very sharp transition. But when you tensile TiO2 transition temperature low, so you have a range of range of strain from TiO2 fully coherent to fully relaxed, you have a range of the transition temperature. Okay? So that is a calculation. It's not measurement, it's calculation, make this phase diagram. So, other thing is, okay, can you really see this small strain and large strain because substrate is more, more like a clamped by the substrate, and here when you get thicker, your relaxation happens on the top. When you do calculation, and it's a phase transition, you heat it up, and then you actually can do nucleation at the bottom interface because of here, Strain is, is large, so transient temperature here is lower, and the transient temperature is high, so you can see that it's a, this one, larger strain, transient temperature is low, and the lower strain, transient temperature is high. So that means when you heat it up, this one, when you heat this one at low temperature, for example, I have a temperature initially set up. Okay. Okay. Initially, 
I have a starting temperature, okay, starting from here. And you heat it up. Then transition this one first to make changes and gradually happens. Can you understand this part? So when you heat it up, and then, uh, maybe my battery is on. Okay. Uh, I think something wrong with this computer. Problem is, I have a movie to show. Movie doesn't come out. Then that's less interesting here. Okay. I mean, the computer doesn't have those. Okay. Let me change my pattern. problem. I think it's not very easy. Your response of this quite slow. Okay. So anyway, so when you have small strain, large strain, and this one is broad, I cannot show it here. And then uh, the broad in homogeneous dynamics, and then the actual nucleation start from here and spread to the top. Uh, <coughs> Anyways, we can do this. It is computers. Do you know how to solve this problem? Or the version? Oh. No, I think this is the version. But this one shows quite no problem in when I show other beneficial mode. Okay, so I think I'll just, just do it that way. Okay, that's, that's all right. This, but the somehow, the response is quite slow. Okay, so anyway, monoclinic to rutile, you have a phase transition, and then your structural electron diffraction pattern, this one is higher symmetry than this, you can see. And then you can see the change of this. Uh, Hopefully I can see, I can show something here. Oh. Too bad. This is a very important image I cannot show. This one actually shows the uh, actual transition is okay. okay. Sorry. So you have you have the uh, TiO2, your strain gradient is a large strain gradient here, and this region you have more compressed or tensile strain than this region. So transition happens initially here first and propagate in this region bigger and bigger then the final transition happens here okay? over quite wide range of temperature region and then low temperature to high temperature probably 323 to 345 roughly 20 Kelvin region we have a transition happens And when you look at this, we map out this, your transition width as initially nucleate here and propagated bigger and bigger. And finally, we get completely glutide structure and broad transition. So this is due to inhomogeneous lattice strain, and that's why it broad homogeneous phase transition in this case. So now I think we understand this is coming from strain effect breadth transition and due to strain gradient. So how to realize FTX similar sharp and homogeneous phase transition of a room temperature? And that's a 
first question we came out at the beginning. Then you have to make a whole film uniform strain. Okay? But uniform strain, but has to be no strain. Which means like a bulk like. Bulk material, transient temperature above room temperature. You have a strain like a some way tensile strain involved, then transient temperature is suppressed. You don't want to go below temperature. So that means you want to have a whole thing like a bulk. But it's no strain. It's the whole region, uniform. So ideally, you want to have this kind of geometry. You fill the whole thing, bulk like lattice, is not connected to this, but uniform strain. That's what you want. How you can do this? Growing both epitaxially, but you don't want to have a large high end grain boundaries, but epitaxially. But at the same time, you want to have very nice uniform strain. So we have found that is tin dioxide, it's tin dioxide, which is same lutite structure, but lattice mismatch huge both ways. And then this one is 3%, and this one 4%. So you have this kind of 3 or 4% of strain. You remember the math black equation I show you, 4% is a critical thickness of maybe less than 10 angstrom. That means relax it within one or two in your cell, you need to relax. And once you relax that region, the rest of them can easily can form fully incoherent growth without any strain. Okay? So that is <coughs> basic idea. Basic idea is, okay, we cannot make a fully coherent, we don't have a substrate, like exactly the same as a bulk substrate, a bulk like a VO2, then you have to go extremely the opposite direction. Okay, just relax it fast. And then, then you have a tin dioxide does not have any solubility at all between VO2 and tin dioxide. And then that's why this region of it is a very easily is forming no interdiffusion between. So there's no chemical doping at all. But the problem of VO2 and TiO2, some of these are at ionic size, those are very similar. So that you have an inner diffusion is very easily can happen. So you have an inner diffusion can create broadening as well, chemical doping. But here, tin ionic size are quite different, so it's not easily can switch it. So when you do that, the lutile 4.55 for VO2, and TiO2 4.59, and the tin dioxide 4.74 is quite large. Okay? So when you grow this, you grow very nicely of taxial tin films, but because of this lattice match is huge, and then I show you when you grow lattice match to huge, you grow a lot of island. Do you remember that? Uh, strontium luthanate, calcium luthanate, and then strontium calcium luthanate growing a lot of those. You grow many island, rather than growing beautiful step flow growth. You have a many island, and many island grow more as a columnar growth. And if the columnar growth match together, each domain here is quite small. And very small domain, but in this region, it's single crystal, and those things very low angle grain boundaries between those different regions of nucleus. Okay? When you nucleate it here and here, and then grow, this is a typical growth of the large, large less mismatch called columnar growth. Okay? So you have domains, but these domains is all look at this and at diffraction here, strain is zero. Can you see that how uniform the strain here? Maybe substrate near that, a little bit of the strain involved, but bulk of the whole film is completely lax and no strain gradient. And then color contrast is only one color compared to color I show you here is this color. Where is that one? There's a lot of color contrast in this sample. Okay? So that means you have strain gradient is almost to zero. Where is 
somehow this computer overloaded because I've opened so many PowerPoint files. Okay, so you have a no string, but you have a lot of domain boundaries. So what is the transition looks like if you have this kind of case? And then this one matters or not. So we did some kind of calculation and what happens phase transition of particular this kind of microstructure. No strain gradient, you have a lot of domain boundaries. So the structure here is a look at it, a lot of columnar growth here, a lot of domain boundaries, and then different regions you have a domain walls here. Structure looks like a messy, but at least the strain is no differences. And then this is a region, so diffraction pattern and different regions have a different uh, domain configuration, but at least the strain is the same. So we look at exactly the same kind of microstructure, homogeneous strain, we have a lot of fine columnar structure. And the phase specific simulation is a computation, can simulate this one, what the transition dynamics by computer, without doing real, calcul real experimental work. And when you do that, the problem is, this one doesn't work. <laughs> but this one shows very sharp transition, and then nucleation at both bottom and top interface, and then it's evolved. But the transition is happening not propagating from the bottom to up. Because there's no strain gradient propagating bottom and top, you merge it to sandwich in between. Because your know, interface here, Interfacial energy is plays a role. So usual nucleation happens whatever interface. So top interface, bottom interface merge it and disappear. So homogeneous bulk like that is sharp and homogeneous transition. Maybe after this class, anybody interested in, and they come to podium here. I'll play video so you can actually see the video because you're curious and come in and I'll share my video a small screen. Because uh, somehow this, uh, I don't have a connector for this and it doesn't work. So the reason is that actually the transition happens, bottom interface and top interface start nuclei and merge and disappear, but doesn't feel like is you have a domain boundaries here. Just ignore the domain boundaries, just to form uniformly just uh, looks like, a, I feel like nothing there. The reason you have this kind of behavior, you have interfacial energy between here to here, or interfacial energy between here to here. This interfacial energy a lot bigger than this interfacial energy. Which means, this interfacial energy is so big. So you want to minimize the interfacial energy, but it doesn't matter. So you don't feel like this. So why is the interfacial energy is a lot bigger than this? This one involves different structure and different electronic properties. So this region is tetragonal, this region monoclinic, but structurally different. Then you have interfacial energy is high. And electronically metallic or intellectual insulator, that interfacial energy also contribute to. But in here, Interfacial energy is same monoclinic structure, so that interfacial is much smaller. So that means here, when you calculate this, I think somehow that okay, phase boundary here, the structural dissimilarity, but monoclinic rutile, this one structural difference, large elastic energy and phase boundaries. That's why between these two rutile monoclinic phase interface energy is very high. That is this phase boundary. Okay. So this is a rutile, or this is a, a, uh, the uh, monoclinic phase. So this phase boundary energy is roughly one joule per square meter. And then this interfacial energy, 0.01 to 0.2 joule per square centimeter. This is a calculation. So that means this one is structural interface. Is ignore, you can ignore that. So governing dynamics not depending on local microstructure is governing is mostly actually this phase boundary. So this is a very important to really explain this 
and doing experiment because uh, the experiment we did is in situ TDM needs a lot of work. It's not just simple; it's a lot of work, and then you don't want to do without some kind of, I mean, the assurance of this theory shows some kind of indication of this right direction going, because you spend a lot of years of work. Later, oh, I think we did something wrong. Okay. So that's why it's very useful. You have to work with collaboration with which one is the best way to actually answer those questions. And this microstructure, you have a lot of columnar microstructure. When you play this, and it's supposed to have some movie play, but now it's not playing. And then you have to come down, and then I have to do that at the end of it. And the nucleation is happening from the top and bottom and merge it together. And then even last piece of the transition happens, it looks like this. I mean, all happens, last piece left over here, and then just ignore whatever domain boundaries. So it's exactly this indicate is this kind of simulation, <coughs> this kind of shape. Okay? If it's not, usually nucleation happens, this interface, this interface. And then, because of this interface is high, then you actually nucleation happens all the new interface, but it's not. Okay. Take the snow here. Okay. So you have a collective continuous phase transition, and then this sharp transition happens, and then look at this. When you do that. When you heat it up and nothing happened, and certainly 338 degree Kelvin here, nucleation happened top and bottom, and then merge from the top and bottom, and suddenly go away. The difference between this transition and the other one, other one starts from the bottom and propagate to top. Do you remember that? Because strain here, more strain than top. That's why it's propagating from the bottom to top. But now, you no strain gradient, your nucleation coming from two interfaces. So from top and bottom, and merge it, and disappear, transition extremely sharp. And then homogeneous bulk line lattice and transient dynamics above room temperature, you can see that. And transition is as sharp as bulk material, very, very sharp. And then now, you can actually see, this is the what we uh, mentioned, that fully coherent approach, like a first lecture approach, only a nanometer. Not good. And then, most of the people using without any tin dioxide buffer layer, this is approach. And then, just a simple concept, Vest, very fast relaxation, inserting very large vest mismatch layer, tin dioxide, make extremely sharp transition above room temperature. And you see the width of this, very narrow, less than one degree. And then we achieve sharp metal insulate transition above room temperature. So this is a concept, is epitaxy, is a beauty of taxi, heroic taxi, but it's many ways of thinking. Heroic taxi is a very well matching, or you have to fast relaxation in con unconventional way. So, in this, so as I said in the beginning, we're trying to use an optical device. So, optical device, you need to look at refract index change, insulator to metal, and then refract index is a metal state. The effect index only 1.6 or 7, and then insulating state like 3.2. And about 1.55 laser, that's the most of the laser they use, optical modulators. And then you have a transition here, and a large sharp changes, optical constant, and wide range of random. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you. And I can Same problem. Yeah, that, 
that's the one. It's the female. Okay. happens at the interface. Can you see that? Going up, move up, 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 up. And disappear. Can you see that? Where it happens, exactly where you start first, and what's the end up. And then you look at, compare this image with a strain, actual strain mapping. A strain mapping to where, what temperature changes 
you can one-to-one -one relationship exactly ISO structural, ISO temperature mapping, we match it, then our hypothesis is correct. Okay, so let me just show you here. I think I don't think this first one somehow doesn't work, but that's all right. I think let's use. Let me show you one more time how slow this transition because it takes a long time to do that. And then initially, starting from here, but well, you have a crack here. Sideway, so we can make uh, this contour plot. The next one is a contour plot for showing this strain gradient in shielding contour plot. Every temperature, you can make uh, this contour plot. Okay. So now you have seen this one as a real time. And then let me show you, this is actual each temperature, the black dot is each temperature of this, what fraction, what fraction of the blue type phase forms. This will measure the monoclinic area, or measure the I mean, tetragonal area. And you see the same thing for this one. You see that? Go. Shock transition. This is all computer simulation. In the computer simulation, shows how sharp transition, where this nucleation happened, where it spread. This one we can do, we call phase field simulation. Yes, we can do mesoscopic simulation, we can do that. And then uh, I'm going to show you this other movie. And then what happens? You look at the movie, nucleation is happened. Not ha nothing happens, suddenly, bottom and top go up. Can you see that? Very quickly. Let me try one more time. This happens very quickly from the top. Nucleation happens. You see? Bottom one go up, top one go down. Merging. Which, which one is the last piece left over? Last piece left over here. Do you see that? Okay, let me just play one more time. Last piece left over, last transition is around here. It collapse, last piece here. And then that's a piece, last piece here. Which means this one completely ignore the domain boundaries. Okay? So now I think we have directly visualized exactly where the transition happened and that which makes a match with the strain gradient and then our temperature phase transition dynamics and that is directly proved by a hypothesis. But this is answer our science question, very important science question, can you control those dynamics? But also we can solve the technological issue of making transition temperature high and above room temperature to make an optical device. So I'm going to show you here that this one is basically nothing happened, very nothing happened. Suddenly, nucleation and collapse, find it. So that's why very sharp. So you know to make optical device, and then the way you optical device, you have to make this kind of optical waveguide. And the waveguide making it not very simple. It involves a lot of processing steps. I'm going to skip those things here because that's not the main purpose of this. And then use insulating VO2 and your metals here. And then your SUA, this is another layer and the silicon, your optical waveguide, the silicon. So depending on your VO2 underneath of VO2 in free factor index, actually light go through or light can be blocked by this region can be metal or insulator. So become metal, and then you become it's a path through. So you can actually see that simulation, if I index the silicon, is 3.4. And VO2, 3.1, so very similar. So that means you have, initially, the simulation shows insulating VO2. Okay, the underlying here, VO2 insulator, then light cannot penetrate. 
Light can cannot go through. But once you become, this one become metal, and then metallic VO2, then you go path through. So this is a computer simulation, shows what kind of device geometry, and then what is the actual device has to be fabricated, then you can make this one, and then metallic VO2 light go through, and then insulating VO2 it blocks. So this is a very simple, is optical switches, optical modulators. And then reflect index 1.7 here. And the reason 1.7 here insulator, and then this one doesn't do anything, so the light actually go here and spread it to here, because the reflect is very similar, but this reflect is very small, only light can go through here. So this is all processing step, and then we transfer the silicon membranes and single crystal membranes to here, and then there's a lot of steps, but this is a whole process step, I'm, not, I'm going to skip it here. But idea here is you apply electric field here, apply electric field, and drive this region either thermally or electrically, but I think more like a thermal process, because when you electrical current, electric field apply, then you have a dual heating, then drive the temperature high, and then and then become metallic transition. So this is the one with conventional approach of the broad transition, like this sample. We use this kind of sample. Okay? So we compare, make an exacted two optical modulator, and made from this, made from that, see what the difference. When you do that, and then this one is without any tin dioxide fast relaxation, you have very, it's a, a very thin fast relaxation layer, and you see the switching a lot faster. And the switching speed is like 100 times faster than, and then this one, transmission control 100 times faster, and full on and off is 100 to 20 nanoseconds. And this is also compared with all the previous work, polycrystalline film, 10 times faster than any other work. So that also, advantage of this, is not only fast switching speed, your actually domains are very small domains here. So during the phase transition, your volume changes, and your volume changes monoclinic to tetragonal phase transition, then you have a lot of strain concentration, stress concentration on the film, and this one is mapping phase field simulation of phase, like the stress, stress concentration, single domain, and this one is a lot of multi-domain. And then stress concentration is a lot bigger than this one. So that means you have each of them divided small section, so strain is never be built up large, and then actually confined very small one. And that's why this one has no crack, it's a lot of cracks. So when you measure this, without relaxation, you see a lot of cracks here. Okay. This cracks due to this stress concentration, in this case, and then in here, and no cracks. But when you measure multiple cycling, these cracks, with the thermal cycling, it, it, it drift, and then without a uh, crack, it's many, many cycles, it stays the same. So, just a simple epitaxial approach, fast relaxation, and then solve stranger dynamics, and then this is the key, but this is an unconventional way, and trying to make a match exactly, same match, and then relaxation, and then helps, and then uh, make our one of the fundamental transition dynamics issue. Okay, so I'm going to stop it here for that one. Uh, right. Okay. And then uh, maybe I can do one more, and then I'll after maybe um, answer some questions about this. Sir, can you please do the first DEM Okay. All right. Which one? The one that does not contain the tin 
This one. Okay, so this uh, the sample stage. I don't know exactly the heating stage in this one. It's a hot plate kind of thing, right? Not hot plate. This this everything done in TEM. No, the heating. How are you uh, heating the uh, sample? Heating the sample. Yeah. Usually this one is inside the TEM grid. Put the very very. Do you know the TEM sample? Anybody know the TEM? Cross sectional TEM very thin. Put on top of the grid, and the grid on top of the heating stage in the tilt stage, whatever. And then the heating is done by maybe some uh, resistive heating, and then very slow, and then that's done. Or sometimes what they do is cool down first. I mean, this one is not cool down. This is the transient temperature above. So they have room temperature to gradually heat it up. And then it can be heated from the bottom or top, I do not know. But the heating done between this one and next one, done same way. But because the same way, so we cannot argue that this is coming from the bottom temperature higher than top temperature. I don't think we can argue that way because the other one coming from both ways. Have you tried heating it from the uh, uh, side, from the top? I don't think we have, we want to do from the top. Maybe you have to use a radiation yeah, heating radiation. something, but I don't think we can do that. I think the register heating is the sample stage limitation. So I just want to share one other way of how a taxi helps solving the problem, but different ways. And then, uh, so I think uh, this is uh, um, the interesting um, the, uh, approach. Uh, I think uh, maybe you can use a uh, similar things. I think uh, what I have is something we only know this way. But you may have an answer is over there different ways. <coughs> Any more questions? What is the thickness of isomotic buffer layer? Uh, this thickness is over a few nanometers, very, very thin. It, it because of four percent, four percent of this, you can actually see. It, uh, okay, let me just show you what the uh, thickness of tin. If you look at the microstructure, and this tin dioxide, okay, the thicker than the tin dioxide. Here, you see the thickness here. That's a hundred nanometer. Okay, I think this maybe hundred nanometer region. Yeah, this thickness is maybe hundred nanometer, and then this one is is uh, the tin dioxide, maybe 300 nanometer or 400 nanometer. What is the lattice mismatch between the SNO2 and the bow layer and the SNO2 and the titanium oxide is 4? 4, 3 percent. 4, 3 percent. Yes, 4, 3. The bow layer, VO2 layer is so high. VO2 layer is? So thick. So thick. Yeah. As compared to SNO2. Oh, this one is just, uh, the thickness is not very important. Because as long as this layer provide, and uh, this one is completely relaxed from here to here, and isolate from this one, and that's good enough. Any more questions about this? What is the electrical resistivity at room temperature of SNO2? That's a very good question. Actually, tin dioxide. The, this one is uh, used uh, uh, some other types of ex uh, ex uh, the uh, the uh, gas sensors and other things, but this one is in in the uh, metallic state. This is a lot more metallic than than this one, and usually no, this is a lot more metallic than tin dioxide, because if you look at this one because you have, this is basically making two parallel circuit of it, but tin dioxide is uh, much more insulating. The metallic state of of the uh, of the uh, rutile phase of the VO2, but insulating phase maybe maybe comparable. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, 
and that's why we insulate phase, and then this current doesn't go through here. They basically insulating both of them within that resistance range. I think it's about the same. And also this thinner than this. So uh, in the insulating state, I don't think we have any current flow. But metallic state and current only go through here, not going through here. Oh, we tried to find the tin dioxide surface, single crystal. We could not find it. And then we tried to get it from the vendors, and they said, well, it's very hard to make it and get it. But if you have a single crystal tin dioxide sulfate, then that, that's a simple way to do. But maybe getting the large size of tin dioxide single crystal sulfate more expensive than TiO2. TiO2 sulfate most abundant. It's very easy to get. And then lutile. Is, is a, this is used a lot of other applications. And then uh, so it can be two different orientation, other orientation. So once you know this very simple conceptual thing, you can use this integration of other materials, like a silicon or MGO, you can do other things. But I think this one just scientifically demonstrating stranger dynamics of the, of the what the origin of this. More questions then? So right now, 36 and then uh, maybe we can have one short uh, lectures like uh, uh, 30 minutes or so then um, you can do some homework for that you can do that okay let's do that Okay, let's talk about this um, in situ monitoring and why in situ monitoring is so critical. And then, uh, then we can talk about some other interfacial phenomena. So, atomic layer control is many reasons we want to do that. One initially we are interested in a lot of devices, nanoscale devices, interfaces and defects, and then uniformity of barriers. All the structures, uh, multi-layer structures, very important. And then, uh, for example, sometimes the interface is more critical than actual active layers. <coughs> for example, magnetic tunnel junction, ferroelectric memories, ferroelectric squid magnetometer, and then squid and coated conductors. So, Kiospec oxide thin film growth, substrate, in situ monitoring, and then oxide, a lot of passivated hybrid device multilayers. So I already talked about in this diagram, and then this oxide layer has a particular termination layer, you know, strontium oxide termination and TI termination, and then you have, when you look at the uh, content mode and friction mode, and you see very different the friction contrast depends on what time of termination. And then you can make this one by single termination I show you. But this in situ read can monitor the actual layer by layer and then monitoring intensity oscillation 
and at the same time, you can do this kind of um, the uh, diffraction pattern and give another information. So I already talked about this one, but I want to give you a little bit of some student here ask about the, the pseudo cubic and cubic lattice parameter, and then I just want to explain this because it's very important. So strontium ruthenate is also a mixed structure, and then this ruthenium oxygen, okay, ruthenium oxygen octahedra right here, this it's not exactly no rotation. Remember the laser rotation I mentioned? The tilt, in phase, in phase, and out of phase tilt, minus, minus, plus, 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 minus. Remember that I talked about polar metals? And this tilting makes this symmetry is, is lower symmetry. Because of no tilting, and then you have this tilting is one goes this way, other one that way, then makes this symmetry is lower symmetry double the unit cell. Okay, the doubling this direction and then square to two doubling that direction. So structure is a lot bigger. Unit cell is repeating, exactly same repeating unit get bigger. Looks like superstructure. Okay? But you have to look at the inside of it, you can create another pseudo cubic lattice, which is very similar to strontium titanate, but not exactly perfect cubic, it's like a distorted cubic. So how you define it? And then this all the atoms, the C lattice parameter is like a 7.8 angstrom, and in plane lattice parameter 5.5 and 5.5 angstrom is, is, a, is a lot bigger than this, but you can define your lattice parameter is diagonal direction, is this diagonal direction, or that diagonal direction, it's a square root two, I mean, that, that diagonal divided by two, that is uh, another lattice parameter you can define. And then C direction, half of this is another lattice parameter. So this is a called pseudo cubic lattice, and this B1 is orthermic lattice. So when you actually use this kind of lattice mismatch, actually, of uh, the study, uh, the uh, consideration, you have to calculate the pseudo cubic because you have to compare it to apple to apple. If you compare this value to strontium titanium sulfate, apple to orange, it's a different way. Remember that? So I show you some image here, uh, the other one. Where is that? Uh, I use all these numbers. Can you see this number? <coughs> these all thermic numbers, A, B, C, and all three numbers, you use this one, average A star, is coming from that subunit cell, this is based on pseudo cube. And then we have to use, oops, <laughs> sorry. We have to use this one and this one. Okay? We have to use this one, that one, not this one and that one. You got it? Okay. So we have this value is coming from and this. Coming from here. So this large unit cell and small unit cell, but this is the call C over 2, half of the C. And this one is a square and b square square root of two. Okay, so that is the actual unit cell. And then you have to look at this all the orthorhombic unit cells. You have to use uh, this kind of calculation. Sometimes this value and that value are not the same. Okay, because the distortion bigger, then this value and that value quite different. That's why some of the the value I show you is is here. You see here, these two values are not the same. Because distortion big, and this value, and then diagonal direction, not the same. That's why you have two values here. Okay? So, when you study some orthrombic system, PBNM, like a similar to like lanthanum nicolate, or the, the neodymium nicolate polar metals, and you have to understand this notation, 
And when you do X-ray diffraction work on this kind of orthorhombic system, you can do X-ray diffraction two different ways. You X-ray diffraction indexing based on orthorhombic index, or you can index based on pseudo-cubic index. You can do that. But ideally, when you do your study, your physics of study, you want to use this one. That's a true, true symmetry of it, and I thought it. Because this is the symmetry of you doing it, and then, uh, so make, for example, magnetic anisotropy over here, and this one. And then you have, looks like this one, this one, and that one equivalent. But not. It's not equivalent. Your magnetic easy axis here is not going through this direction or that direction. Magnetic easy axis, this direction. The longer. This one and that one is different, right? Because this one's longer and shorter. Magnetic easy axis is that one. Okay? So magnetic is that one, this one, and then this one is different. And this this one and that one different. So we have a only uniaxial and anastropy on this system based on orthorhombic structure. Then you cannot use this cubic system, pseudo-cubic. Pseudo-cubic is all averaged out. So you have to use this one. So Simply, when you order the substrate, it's not it's this very practical thing. When you order your substrate, call your substrate company. I want to order new Dinning Galley substrate. They ask what orientation you need. I need the 100 orientation. Then ask it, well, 100 what? Orthrombic or, or cubic? Pseudo cubic. 100 cubic means this, this cut. 100 orthrombic is this, this plane. So that's a totally different one. So you have to understand, you have to make sure which orientation you need. And when you do x-ray, and then you measure transport measurement, magnetic measurement, you have to really know what orientation. At the same time, when you grow your thin films, make sure, mark your orientation in plane very precisely that makes your life much easier. So ideal way to do, we do, make your substrate not perfect square, rectangular shape, little different, or you can make a corner, make a marker of the corner, so know which one is which, so everybody know your notation. Okay, that's one, one trick you can do, is a lower symmetry system, you have to work differently from cubic strontium titanate. Strontium titanate, Cubic, this direction, that direction, same, equivalent. But this is not. Okay, so now somebody asked question this. Who asked this question about this uh, orthrhombic cubic? This one? Okay. So I will talk about this. So we have this gross mode transition, and then remember that we have this uh, gross. Uh, let me just show you before you do that. The gross mode. In epitaxy, is many different growth modes. And the growth mode is 3D island growth, like a growth like island. Like a, this is a very undesirable growth when you make a very flat surface. And then more, this is a columnar growth. When I show the VO2 on tin dioxide, it grows like this, and then merge it. And then you have a layer by layer growth, which means you layer you clean it separately and merge it together, make a one, then another layer grow on top until you finish finish the top one layer. So layer by layer is never nucleate another island on top of the another island until we finish the complete coverage. So that's why this island a layer by layer growth you can do works very well for the read oscillation. When you read the oscillation, it's perfectly worked for this one. Because you have a coverage, fully covered, then there's a maximum, then this coverage happens in multiple islands, and merges together, and 50% coverage go down, then filling those space go maximum, so that is a, this most ideal to look at the perfect oscillation counting this. When you go step flow growth, reads doesn't work. Read the oscillation, you don't see the oscillation. Because you have always perfect 
always you have a no element. Why? You atoms lay down here, atom diffuse to the edge here so quickly, you never form the island on the top. So what happened is, atom lay down, move here, and move this edge, move that edge, and this whole process of step flow growth. So the step flow growth, this I layer by layer growth, you have a two different growth modes I'm going to show you in other case. But read is so powerful, can tell how fast your inter your surface diffusion and what exact the growth mode, you can tell all this information. And then this case, island growth, and island growth here, your diffraction pattern is coming from transmission pattern going, read, beam going in and going out. So transmission pattern, like a lot of spotty pattern. And that is most of the 3D island. But 2D growth, you have no penetration there. So like a more like a spot, two spot, or strict patterns. And that's what I'm going to show. And then, but the, remember, layer by layer, or step flow growth, and I'm going to talk about. But 3D island growth, looks like that. And columnar growth like this. So you have a different growth mode. And then I'm going to show you some example of how this growth mode happens. And let me just to show you this <coughs> model system strontium luthanate and then growing strontium titanate trilayer. So this is a titanium dioxide terminated strontium titanate in the beginning. Surface, perfectly smooth. And read pattern, very clear read break diffraction one. And then when you deposit it, your island deposit on top surface, you drop down bottom here. Then you have this very tiny island. Can you see that island? Then you grow, come back here, looks like isolation, and then looks covered. And lead pattern is very sharp. Before then, you see that a lot of spotty pattern? Because the lead goes in and transmit, and you have this pattern. And then when you go fully covered, and then pattern is changes. So you have information of diffraction pattern, and then read oscillation, and AFM image give a lot of information of your growth mode and how it happens. And the reason I'm showing you here. Is this a one good example system you can understand the real growth mode. And once you pass one oscillation, then very different growth pattern. No oscillation. You have no oscillation, which means it's not a layer by layer growth. Remember? Layer by layer growth, you have to grow complete coverage, then you start to nucleate and complete coverage. But here, nothing like this. So what happened here? But why you have a, such a very sharp up and down thing? Okay, this one is each oscillation here correspond to each laser pulse. You actually laser pulse five hertz of laser pulse provide flux every one fifth of second, giving <coughs> flux. Okay. You have a, that kind of fast, and that is the oscillation here. What happened is, when you zap it, laser, atoms lay down on the surface at the atom, and go down very fast, but atoms move very quickly to the step edge. When you come back to step edge, you come back to original value. So we have a next purse provided, and then go down, but atoms move from here to here so quickly, surface diffusion is so fast, and then you come back again. So this one is all the indication of step flow growth, and each jumping up and down is due to each laser purge, each flux coming. So that means this step flow region, and the first initially, this one is Highland growth, the 2D uh, layer value growth. So here clearly shows some transition from layer by layer to step flow growth. 
very initial stage. Why? Why it doesn't go? Why it doesn't stay layer by layer? Why it doesn't start with the step flow growth? And that is something coming from a surface termination layer. You start from TIO2 termination, as I saw, tell you. The TIO2 termination, and then this is a BO2, B side termination, TIO2. But when you put down strontium luthanate, and strontium luthanate, the ruthenium is very volatile. The ruthenium oxide is very volatile. So ruthenium does not want to be stay on top. Okay? So what happened is initially, TiO2 termination layer, surface diffusion of species on TiO2 is very slow. So that's, that's why initially island growth. But once you reach that change of termination to B side termination to A side termination, strontium termination, then diffusion is very fast and the surface slow. So how do you know the termination changes? So you're going to get the first oscillation is roughly one and a half times. So that means you have to provide flux, 1.5 times of flux to complete, which means first growth building block is not one unit cell. First building block is one and a half unit cell. So one and a half unit cell building block is after completed, then after that it goes to step flow growth maintained always strong strontium oxide termination. Okay, so that is, is some basic fundamental growth mode changes. Island to step flow growth after one oscillation and we call termination conversion. We can actually see that. So when you have, for example, when you initially, okay, let's change it to surface initially strontium. When you strontium termination by one monolayer, first termination is still one monolayer, one unit cell. It's not like this. So you have a no termination conversion. We already made first layer strontium termination by one depositing one monolayer strontium oxide. Then you don't have those things in there. So look at this. This was strontium luthanate, step flow growth after one oscillation, one and a half unit cell. But strontium titanate never goes to flow. Strontium titanate grow tiny island, you can see that here. And strontium titanate grows all the time with oscillation, then this layer by layer growth. And why this one drops smaller and smaller? Then surface is not as perfect as initially. In order to make this one perfect, you have to go higher temperature. And as I show you higher temperature, and then your mobility is a lot higher, and you get very different oscillation like this. This is more ideal oscillation with multiple times. And then you can actually see this read pattern, this read oscillation shows counting unit cell, but you have this spot and 3D island, polycrystalline, and then you have this kind of pattern tells what kind of crystal structure, actually the structure of it. Okay, so now we have this termination conversion and shows how this thing happened. And then you have this one grow next stage of oxide interface, which is very exciting field for over the decade. And now it's even more exciting because we have another counterpart of 2D whole gas is, is actually demonstrated. I'm going to talk about next week. But uh, this one, oxide interfaces, as basically new material. And I'm going to send you several papers, and you can read. And during the, uh, um, uh, during the weekend, I hope you have time to enjoy your time weekend, but I think we have to read some papers. And then uh, the oxide interfaces, and also I'm going to send you some other domain engineering and other things. So I think that's a uh, um, basic the AeroAct taxi, and then in situ monitoring atomic layer control. But this one really allows a termination control makes 
two-dimensional electron gas, and which is, this is a lanthanum aluminate, strontium titanate, both are insulator. But when you make this insulator perfect interface with a particular termination layer, TiO2 termination layer, this one becomes very highly conducting. But you start with this one's strontium termination, and this layer supposed to be two-dimensional hole gas, but does not show the two-dimensional hole gas. And then we have reason, we, have, we found that why we demonstrated to the hole gas. Next week I'm going to show you, because it just came out the paper and then uh, uh, this year. So I'm going to share that. Any questions? I think we have to uh, uh, stop it. And then uh, I want to take a few some questions before I take off. So we have a, uh, the lecture begins next Monday, 9.30, same way. And then, but we don't have a lecture tomorrow. And then I just keep doing a bit without much break. I just com I'll compress this one. And then, but next week, I'm going to give another additional lecture in the afternoon, maybe in the lunch or something, so we have to do it. Okay, let me ask you some question about uh, today's lecture. I think the first is I did a more fundamental error taxi. And the second one, I gave us some example of the bedding titan strain engineering using error taxi. I gave one of the tin dioxide is a other way of error taxi helps. And then I talk about it in monitoring. I need some feedback. I mean, the, which is the more helpful, you guys? How you want to structure differently? Can you? How many you like to fundamentals for the taxi? And then I talked about you like those things. How many you like something you have more about the bearing titanate strain engineering? How many you like something you like to see tin dioxide VO2 example? Okay, you like that movie? Yes. That movie? Yes. Okay, very good. So I think that this is a, a science, a lot of science you do, is you want to make sure is is many ways we can present your science what you discover. And best way to present science is direct thing, with direct approach, rather than indirectly multiple step of this. And this one, and that's why that one, and that one, and then very hard to understand. So I think it's, it's, you can do something very directly to show it, and people can understand better, and appreciate it, and no argument. And then, okay, there's something, why this one, this possibility is wrong, or, or this possibility here, or you show directly, and then less ambiguity in this system. So I think uh, that's another message I, I share in the discipline. And uh, sometimes it's hard. It takes time because this work is, uh, takes uh, many <laughs> years to work. A, a lot of things we present is one paper takes uh, many, many years, not just a single, um, I mean, the quick, uh, quick and, and the result and publish it, but it, it takes a long time to do. And how about the, this piece? That's, that's interesting. But I think it comes out interesting because the interface, the phenomena will come later. You trying to say something? No? Any more? Yes. So what is the problem in synthesizing lantern of candidate single crystal? Okay. Melting point is too high. So you cannot, actually, crucible cannot survive the lantern candidate. Can we do uh, synthesis of every oxide materials, or are, or we are limited to some oxygen content? In my opinion, is there's all the oxide films, There's a window it can grow. I think oxygen partial pressure and oxygen content, and you have to understand these phase diagrams quite well, and kinetics understand it, and you should be growing. But sometimes. You cannot grow in situ. Maybe you have to grow some ex situ process. And that's what one of the examples we couldn't do it is pyrochrome phase, uh, the rares irrigate, two to seven phase. You cannot grow. I think there are several papers only done uh, solid phase of text. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, 
and because of that, region doesn't exist. So I, those things, I think uh, you. That's why I think you have to have a basic knowledge of thermodynamics. And you have to understand the phase diagram. And you have to understand kinetics. I think that always helps because sometimes you only do okay. I want to do only physics. I want to do something measurement, and I just grow it and that's it. But I think uh, you have to understand and those things to to um, to grow your material, right material, in a better way. Okay. Make TiO2 permeable substrate. Uh, if you use TiO2 substrate only, what is the difference between TiO2 substrate only? Okay. TiO2 substrate only is a rutile structure, not perovskite structure. Okay. So the TiO2, what are you talking about here? TiO2 in here is TiO2 termination on perovskite structure. TiO2 and TiO2 substrate. It's not the same lattice. It looks like TiO2, like a rutile, like two-dimensional, but size is different. Because TiO2 lattice parameter, remember the TiO2 lattice parameter? Yeah, five point something? Yeah, it's different. So it's not the same one, but it uh, looks like TiO2 here. This is talking about two-dimensional lattice, not three-dimensional lattice. Okay, then I'll uh, have a good weekend, and then I'll uh, have a few, maybe 10, 15 minutes I can stay, and then I'll, uh, if you have any question, uh, we can talk. But otherwise, I'll see you next week. I'll send you some stuff, and do some homework, and then I'll uh, have fun next week. Okay. Thank you.